Hello from Leo TV. We are here to talk something very interesting. It's a conversation we are going to have, and it's going to be about what startup is, what startup culture is, and how businesses were many years ago. I'm 61, so I have been witness to how businesses operate, and so is my friend Koshi over here. We have seen how businesses are built businesses sustain and how businesses fall and we have been one of those few in a generation who have managed to migrate to what is called the information age from the industrial era. When I say migrate, we have, we have more or less adapted to the new technologies in a small way, not entirely though. So today when we think of how startups are run, it intrigues us. Though we are, we call ourselves digital migrants, it's very difficult to fathom. So I'm sure that a lot of you who are watching this will have the same kind of a challenge. So we thought we will sit and talk about it and expose or you know bring to the forefront some of the reasons as to why startups do business the way they do business. And let's start by listening to what Koshi has to say. Thank you, Benny. It's interesting. A lot of debates I've heard on this uh, issue. I remember I still have an old uh, pager in my room. So that was the first exposure that we had, apart from the landlines we used to have. So uh, it's better to call that the old economy, and now what we have, uh, let's say, is the startups. Now, what is the difference between that? As you rightly said, we've seen the complete uh, change from the old economy, the industrial age, to the information age. Defining bedrock of startup is the culture of cash burn. And the old economy had a totally different structure to it. Uh, so I still hold on to my old views, my, old, my position on the old economy, that it's on much firmer premise than what the startups are. That is what I would uh, think is the opening remark I would like to make. So when we listen to the word cash burn, what comes into your mind? Do you think of loads and packets and sacks of cash being put into fire? Is that what cash burn is all about? Well, that's the kind of uh, language we use because it's eventually it's about burning cash. Why do you say burning cash? Let's take a startup which is doing something new, which is disrupting the market. Now, take a case of Uber, for example. When Uber came into the market, we were used to driving our own cars, hiring taxis, and maybe using the cabs which the tourist operator provides. Today, sitting at home, from the mobile, you are able to book a cab and how did Uber manage to get a guy like me be able to do that? Obviously, they have burnt money. How did they burn money? They have hired cabs or they have got the cabs before the market actually could understand what Uber service is all about. And this is what they say is about cash burn. Now, what we need to discuss is these startups, which are from the new economy, are doing business with the future in mind and not with the present in mind. So when you're talking about doing, uh, creating wealth for the future, you're looking at maybe 5 years, 10 years or 20 years from now, you're creating a completely new world altogether. And that's what these startups are doing. Now, when these startups are doing such kind of uh, imaginative or futuristic work, they obviously cannot be doing the same things which the old businesses were doing. What was the old business doing? The old business was investing money on sure short projects which brought them profits and they paid the shareholders. The startups don't operate that way. They in fact do not operate that way at all. If at all they operate, then they fail. Now let's listen to what Koshi has to say about this future outlook that the startups have. 
what is the basic difference between the old economy, as I would like to call it, and the startup? Is that uh, startups leverage information technology for hypothetical projections and then justify the cash flow. Now, this is the basic difference that uh, I see between these two. And uh, what have they, you mentioned Uber. Now, Uber is a classic example of doing an old business with the integration of information technology. Startups only have that to which uh, they bring to the table. So finally, it's just an idea which I don't think most of the times is it has come of age. And uh, so this is what I see in most startups. And they justify this futuristic projection of revenue and profit and they end up with what is known as cash burn. So I don't think it's sustainable. Uh, if you look at many of the cases still date, the so-called successful ones, uh, let's take example uh, Tesla, It's today it's a burnout. It's not only cash burn they had, but it may be very right technically that it is feasible and tomorrow's uh, Transportation may be electric, electric based. However, it's before their times. So this is a lot of the structure itself is not validated, if you ask me. Yeah. You were talking about Tesla being ahead of the times. Isn't that what a startup has to be? Startup, startups basically come up with ideas which we as common people have not thought of at all. Solutions for day-to-day -day life which we as ordinary people haven't thought of. Have you ever thought of going to space and setting up something over there, maybe 10 years from now? Or have you mooted this idea to your kids? No, we haven't because we, we as people, we, we have something called the, we have something, we work on something called the hyperbolic discounting. What is hyperbolic discounting? We rather go for a small reward in the near future rather than looking at a large reward in maybe 20 years or 10 years because that which is there out there in the future it may be very very uh, profitable it may be it may be a treasure but it doesn't make sense to us because i don't know what's going to happen 10 years from now 20 years from now maybe there's going to be a nuclear holocaust whatever but that is how we think but these startups, these people who are creative, now, who are uh, many, the point is there is nothing wrong in having an idea of the future, for the future and doing something now. That's very fine and maybe that's what the new generation is. But they have, what they have today is the, uh, if not only the ability but the capability which information technology provides them to do that. That is the only difference, so, but nowhere along a man's uh, development in business you'll find an idea gets converted to revenue or profits. If that is the point, I, I, I concede it. However, you can't call it a business and then end up with cash burn. Cash burn has never been there for all the ideas. You have to go through the stages. You can't jump start it. That is what cash burn is all about. So what, what I thought was interesting is that it's ideas which are which is driving the business today. It's just sheer ideas. Now what is the ideas what is the idea that people come up startups come up with? The ideas they come up with is to make our life a lot easier. The pain points that were pricking us over the past many years they are trying to, trying to make life easy for us by taking care of that uh, particular problem that a normal consumer or a citizen has in their day-to-day -day, day -day life perhaps. They are also painting something which is beyond normal thinking. As people who are working or people who are doing the regular stuff, we don't, we don't really think about uh, we are quite happy with, we are quite content with life. Now, it's these futuristic people who come and say, listen, if you adapt this, life can be a lot better. 
you can be a lot productive and this is exactly what is catching what is you know capturing the fancy of the consumers and they are able to uh, become become successful startups as far as making money is concerned one really does not know how startups make money obviously they don't want to make the money in the in the traditional buying and selling way there's so many other ways the startups make money one of the ways they make money is through valuation how much of how much consumers use the service they that's that's a valuation model they have, and there's a lot more complication valuation models that uh, startups many, use. But uh, not but yeah, uh, the, you mentioned the uh, successful s startups and uh, valuation. Now these are very critical words uh, for the startup culture, as I would call it. Uh, but look at what it really is. Uh, this is the major point I want to make is. Uh, look at the banks information technology was very rightly used in the financial sector where there was a huge efficiency uh, deficit deficiency which is overcome and the benefits really flowed out to the customers today you can send uh, all the financial transactions you practically do it on a, your uh, phone and sell well that, that's great that, and that's the right thing it's not about startup my position on startup is the way they do it, they carry forward the idea and the way they do it. Now why I had to mention this at this point is, here's a case, the financial sector which is rightly used uh, information technology and then the startups. Startups talk about market value addition. What is market value addition? You rightly said, they don't make money, it's not a business where you have a correlation between the margin between your activity cost and uh, what the customer pays in the name of market valuation the price is put below the cost of service now that is where i have uh, difficulty in understanding this uh, startup uh, structuring and which they then justify by the uh, cash burn I don't think there have been any st successful startups, if you uh, call me, from this uh, point of view, in terms of profits. Let's take the case of, uh, say, ordering food over Swiggy or Uber Eats or any of these things. As a consumer, why would I ever download an app on my phone and pay to a Paytm or whatever and order food over Swiggy if, if it's not going to be a profitable thing for me. I need to have a substantial amount of uh, a discount for for the company to seduce me literally to use that service. I think somewhere over there the burning happens. Yeah, the burning has to happen. Otherwise, they will not get a person like me, or they will not get the millions of other people who are ordering over Swiggy. I know that Swiggy today has become so popular. The, the roads are, you know, you can't see a road without a orange t-shirt guy going, you know, zipping past in his bike. <laughs> so it's become so ubiquitous. And the most important thing is I know a lot of people have stopped, especially the bachelors, have stopped cooking and they have moved into Swiggy. So Swiggy, Swiggy in food has become a completely new concept altogether. And how did this concept come into being? It's only because of cash burn. So the cash burn idea has brought in not only a new terminology, a new concept, it's brought in a new word to the vocabulary. Are you saying that cash burn itself is the, uh, the core of the startup to uh, engage in some economic activity? Then it is not justifiable because your cash burn is taking money out of the activity which you call business. Now you mentioned about the customer being benefited today. It's not a sustainable benefit. We have seen, if you see the latest trends uh, for most of the e-commerce, this thing, the discounts have come down, the vendors are getting much less and uh, things have mo started moving towards, it has to gravitate towards the real value. My 
the position on this is this market valuation is a whole new financial structuring done by for the benefit of uh, the uh, startups it's not sustainable is uh, what i want to argue so let's look at uh, how the future holds yeah one of the things which i liked about this new uh, the new uh, economy is the power of the ideas i think from that point of view whether cash burn and all these kind of things not making profits whether it's sustainable or not i don't know about that but ideas have got into center stage thanks to technology thanks to startups that the human mind has finally come to a point we have come come at a point in history where the human mind is becoming very very valuable and this i think is a very very uh, significant thing to happen in this point in time in our society and thanks to startups and thanks to all those entrepreneurs who put their life at, or put their entire thing at risk to go behind an idea and the investors to invest in that idea to see that some change happens in the world and we live in a better place thank you so much